Welcome to Roses and Thorns. I'm Ryan. I'm Kelly. And we're going to talk about The Bachelor. Yep. Uh, the Woman Tell All with my jeans. Oh, I'm supposed to not just say. That's okay. Yep. I got you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You got some news? Um. Okay, I got a few things. Yeah. One, mm -hmm. the skydiving instructor from last week. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about this? No. He broke his leg. Oh, shit. Yeah. So somebody linked me to an entire Reddit thread. Actually, I'll tell you who linked me to it. Okay. Um, it is at Helen Back, Batch, Helen Batch. Um, they linked me to this whole Reddit thread that is basically people in the skydiving community mm -hmm. um, criticizing the skydiving instructor. Like, he must have fucked up because people who know skydiving say mm -hmm. that he fucked up. So they, like, don't feel bad for him. But mm. he broke his leg. Broke mm -hmm. a leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, I don't know what could have happened. I mean, yeah, it just looks like... he. <laughs> I mean, other experts are looking at it and says that he fucked up. So yeah, I'll just, that's probably what happened then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's you, unfortunate. Your turn. You tell me something. Okay. Um, They have a new person that's going to come in mm -hmm. and uh, host the After the Final Rose. Yes. And that person is Emmanuel Acho. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, I, I think I've. I saw his first video with, um, it was, is it un an uncomfortable conversation with a black man? Mm -hmm. Um, probably like a year ago. Okay. Um, and it's always, it's like really good to see people trying to mm -hmm. do better. And that's what it always seems like on his, uh, YouTube channel, at least I think. So, um, it's great to see people trying to do better, especially police, because, um, uh, they have, um, a really bad rap mm -hmm. um, with everybody, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great to see. I don't know. But it seems like it's always a productive conversation. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is like a big difference from a lot of conversations where um, the topic is race. Because mm -hmm. all of his conversations are race-based conversations. Mm -hmm. And those conversations, I feel like, are in regular life typically not productive mm -hmm. but he does have the the benefit that people are coming on his show because they want to talk to him about race it does seem like that yeah mm -hmm. and so he will be a really good host to have this conversation um especially since the uh, a lot of the people that are going to be watching this um are going to be white um i mean at, viewers at home uh so that he can um communicate it really well to white people because i think that's what he's been doing for a very long time so he's probably good at that mm -hmm. and he's going to ask good questions um at rachel probably and probably some other people on the show um and so it's i think he's a really good pick at least for this episode i agree um he started my understanding is he started uncomfortable conversations with a black man uh just under a year ago as a response to everything that was happening with Black Lives Matter and mm -hmm. George Floyd and everything. Mm -hmm. Um but I think he is also I also agree that he's a good pick because his the people that he wants to have conversations with, the people that he wants to watch his videos are the people who don't understand the problems. Mm -hmm. And so it's like he appeases the the people like us who are calling for a change mm -hmm. and it will be a good host to talk to the people who don't understand why all of this happened and don't understand the fire chris harrison movement and everything like that mm -hmm. and i know that um emmanuel will still be bound to what the bachelor will allow him to talk about but i think the conversations he has will be a lot more constructive than the ones that Chris Harrison um, has. Because Chris Harrison says that he holds people's feet to the fire, but he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He often will ask a question. Uh, he'll often let silence um, sit there for a long time so that they can continue talking. But he does not... Uh, grill anybody about anything no he might ask some questions 
But if they choose not to answer, then like that's it. Like if they take a detour in their response, he doesn't try to bring them back on track and be like, no, I asked you this though. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think Emmanuel is a really great pick for this. And I actually just watched the episode of his YouTube channel or his YouTube show, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, um, with Rachel Lindsay. Oh, really? Rachel and Brian were on one of his episodes with um, Lindsey Vaughn and her partner, who is an NFL player. Who's Lindsey Vaughn? She's an Olympic um, athlete. Okay. I think some sort of snow sport. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, also, also, Emmanuel Acho is an NFL, ex-NFL player mm. as well. Mm. Um, but he had them on there because it was a conversation about interracial relationships. Mm. And so you could tell from the conversations that he was ask, asking, unless he was acting, he does not understand why a black person would want to date a white person. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Mm, that's funny. Yeah. Um, so he said that when... Uh, when he was watching Rachel's season, he was so excited to see a black woman on there. And he's like, she's going to choose a black king. This is going to be great. Mm -hmm. And then she chose Brian. He's like, what the fuck? (laughs) And he addresses, um, or they talk about, they have a dialogue about um, members of the black community. Often when they see um, someone from within their community dating with outside of their community, particularly a white person, it feels like they've lost someone from their community and they don't understand why you would want to date the enemy. And so they kind of talk about that. And it was a really interesting conversation. I highly recommend watching that video. Hmm. I guess I never thought of like an Asian woman dating a white guy as like losing somebody, but that might be a good like description of it Mm -hmm. because when, um, you know, middle school and high school, you see, like, um, I was into Asian girls, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even think, like, dating out of my, like, out of Asians, honestly, um, was an option, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, it honestly really wasn't because no one expressed, it. well, one person did. But, like, <laughs> um, like outside of my race, no one really ex- expressed, like, interest. So mm-hmm. uh, when, it, when Asian women were dating white people, it's just, like, like it was just one less person in the dating pool Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of so Mm -hmm. but i guess of a community i mean it's also like you i guess you do worry then like something that we think about it's like oh they're gonna become like i mean it's a little derogatory term calling people saying that they're becoming whitewashed Mm. um because just because they date a white person because they hang out with white people it's still it's like rude to say that about Mm -hmm. someone of another uh, ethnicity saying that they're whitewashed it's just like they're living their experience Mm -hmm. you know like you know don't like doesn't deteriorate from their experience any less yeah yeah so yeah Yeah, and that's i mean rachel said that she rachel Lindsay said that um prior to going on to the bachelorette she really did not have much experience dating outside of black people that that's what she had done like she had only dated black people and she said the first time she went on a date with a white person she felt all the black men that she like in the restaurant staring at her and she like Mm -hmm. she's like i just want to be wearing a t-shirt that's like i swear this is my first time dating a white person that's funny (laughs) yeah but then she said like ultimately on the show like meeting brian like it was a thing she had to deal with and she had to talk to brian about because she wasn't immediately comfortable with the idea of spending the rest of her life with someone who wasn't black. Mm -hmm. But ultimately she realized she had to choose the best person for her. Yeah. What, regardless of what their race was. Yeah. It was an interesting conversation. I know I just said a lot of it, but there's still more to Mm -hmm. watch if anybody wants to go watch that. Okay. So speaking of Rachel Lindsay, Mm -hmm. Um, she had to disable her Instagram or not even just, it's gone. Like you can't search for it. It's gone. Oh, really? It's- yeah. I tried to find it today and I couldn't find it. So somebody else might be able to search for it and say it's fine. But like I follow her and I couldn't find it. Hmm. So I, don't know. I did. I mean, I didn't like search through the people I follow because that just occurred to me just now. But like I did a search for her and I couldn't find her. Hmm. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, she was getting so much hate um, and racism in her inbox and comments that she just she just deleted her Instagram, just done with it, and that really sucks. Yeah. So there's been a lot of support 
in the bachelor community and obviously a lot of hate as well Mm -hmm. towards rachel uh because we all know it's because she's been very vocal about the racism within the bachelor nation Mm -hmm. uh especially with like the franchise itself um like the producers like executives and stuff and a lot of people are not happy about chris harrison being set aside because of her doing her job Mm -hmm. her doing her interview asking very like not that hard of questions he just kept falling into the trap of saying the wrong thing it was his (laughs) fault don't blame rachel for this right yeah she's she's speaking up about racism and stuff yeah that is bad she didn't do anything to chris harrison so fuck anybody if 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 anybody that's listening to our podcast and is thinks Chris Harrison Harrison should keep his job, then you might not want to listen to our podcast. Yeah, I think they probably already quit listening. If that's the <laughs> case, we've been pretty outspoken. I guess you're allowed to disagree with us and still enjoy our podcast, but we do feel very strongly. Yeah, we just, we that- think that you're wrong. <laughs> your yeah. opinion of that is wrong and, and like i said i didn't immediately understand it and like i had to listen to the commentary that was out there mm-hmm. to understand the the problem and i mean ultimately he just was protecting white people more than people of color which is that's not his job his job is not mm-hmm. his job should be to protect everyone equally yeah uh so rachel did speak up a little bit more about that like why she disabled her instagram she did say that she was getting a lot of good stuff but a lot of bad stuff too and she just uh this was on higher learning okay um she said that it was just better for her to just step away and it didn't sound like she was like um uh emotionally exhausted i mean i'm sure she was but like she didn't sound like um just real over like at defeated? least not yeah not like mentally hurt okay. like she's just like she just had to take a break she's feeling a lot better now okay so she's just like you know it's just better for her to have it off right now i can't imagine what it would be like to get hate every day but then to mm-hmm. get hate for something that you like can't even control like it's just your race and it's a thing that you shouldn't feel bad about like if, if we got hate for things we said like those were choices we made to say those things and people could like come at us for them but to just like get hate for being who we are like that what i can't even imagine Mm -hmm. can't imagine yeah yeah what do you have next Mm -hmm. uh did i mention last week about where the bachelorette is probably is probably going to be filmed uh, I know it's somewhere. Oh, it's in Canada, right? No. West Coast? No. Okay, tell me. <laughs> um, the Hyatt Regents outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, well, yeah, that's very different from the rumors. Yeah. So, I mean, that's from reality, Steve. So, okay. Maybe. That's why I said it's probably going to be there. Sure. He says it's 100%. So, we'll they're see. giving a bachelorette a fucking desert again. <laughs> what the fuck <sighs> okay right uh do you have anything i have two more things one is chelsea and mari were on twitter and instagram mm-hmm. um after this woman tell all yeah um basically saying there's more to the story with katie than we'll ever see yeah that's i was gonna i guess i was gonna wait bring that up but that's okay i mean we could talk about that yeah so chelsea says well one thing i have um to say against um which i don't like what i don't really support of what chelsea's saying what she tweeted i say what uh, say what you want but i speak the truth period um and the word is truth the true word truth is the thing i have an issue with is uh and that's because she might have a truth in the part of the bachelorette that she lived in, mm-hmm. like that, the her 
group of friends or um, that part of like group of uh, rooms the women stayed in. Mm -hmm. Like maybe they all had a great time and they were fine together. But then maybe Katie um, and some other people like Piper, um, she's Piper um, piped in and said that Mm -hmm. she's team Katie. So it's like she's not Katie wasn't. No, she didn't. In the women tell, or in, yeah, in the women tell all. No, in the tweets. Oh, okay. Because yeah. in in the women tell all, that's the opposite of what Piper said. Yeah, but she says she's Team Katie. Okay. In in a Instagram reply comment. Interesting. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Did you want to continue with that? No, that's all that I had. Okay. About that, the basically they're under contract, so they can't talk. Mm-hmm. But it there's it sounds like there's a divide in the house about the ex- experiences that they had. Right. Uh, one person said, genuine question, uh, why, this is to Mari, um, genuine question, why did you and the other ladies feel like Katie was causing the toxicity? Um, is there something we're missing? She says, there is a lot that is missing that unfortunately will never come to light. Mm. So most likely they can't talk about what goes on. I think like two years, I think that's how long they can't talk okay. about it. Um, so there's stuff that we don't know about. Yeah. And I think that's to protect some people that might be bachelorette like katie possibly mm-hmm. and i don't know who else mm-hmm. but, yeah uh do you have anything before we talk about the taylor situation uh not really okay do no. you want to start the taylor situation or you want me to oh, well there's one more thing oh okay um bachelor Um, The actual franchise actually came out with their own statement. Oh, that's right. Thank you. I'll read that really quick. Um, As executive producers of the Bachelor franchise, we would like to make it perfectly clear that any harassment directed towards Rachel Lindsay in the aftermath of her interview with Chris Harrison is completely inexcusable. Rachel has uh, received an unimaginable amount of hate and has been subjected to severe online bullying, which more often than not has been rooted in racism. That is totally unacceptable. Rachel has been an incredible advocate for our cast, and we are grateful that she has worked tirelessly towards racial equality and inclusion. Uh, And that's it. Okay. And that's okay. I mean, it's like, I, I feel like that's the bare minimum that they can really say. They didn't even, they didn't really hold um chris harrison accountable they just Mm -mm. said that it was in response not why she's getting all this hate was because of chris harrison's interview uh i think that they should have said a lot more um uh especially since they they could have come out with a much better response considering they have basically unlimited pr budget Mm -hmm. for pr and they could have come out with something way better than a paragraph but they're trying to stay in the middle so that they don't lose people on either side exactly but honestly I, harrison's still part of it too he's yeah. still like, just because he's a side doesn't mean he's fired i do think that they are going to lose a lot of people um from our side of the bachelor over this like over just everything it's just everything it's just the show sucks the show sucks it treats everyone so terribly. Yeah, I, I think we can continue watching this, maybe doing this podcast with another Bachelor from another sh- another country. Mm. Like if it was Canada. Like if, if, I mean, I've watched some Canadian shows and they're a lot more wholesome than mm. American shows. Okay. So like maybe theirs is a lot nicer. Maybe yeah, it's we- less drama driven. We or in other countries that. or something like that. We can look into that because I just, depending on who the next Bachelorette is, mm-hmm. I would be willing to watch the Bachelorette. Mm-hmm. Um, if if they pull back and they get someone like fucking Cassie or Tia or something, I'm done. I'm done. I don't even. I, yeah. Or like Kit or Heather. Like, I yeah. think Heather was like at the top of their list. Not anymore. <laughs> clearly yeah oh gosh we'll talk about that later (laughs) yeah yeah um yeah for me they have to make a very strong choice for the next bachelorette for me to be motivated to watch it Mm -hmm. and i'd be interested in what paradise looks like in quarantine so i would be willing to pick back up for paradise and then yeah i think (sighs) unless they make big changes in this franchise which i don't think they're going to 
Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's not worth it. This is human torture. They're like, I, it's unethical what's happening on the show. And I wonder, often the women and men will say that they don't regret ever being on the show. But I wonder if that's in their contract that they can't say that because they're just so often asked if it was worth it going on their show. And they always say yes. And I wonder why. I wonder that so much because they look like they've gone through hell. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, it was worth it. Is it just because of the Instagram followers? I think I'm sure they their Instagram growth probably grew like crazy. Like not, not like like, like oh, way more than it has ever since they like ha- had an Instagram. But at what cost though? Yeah, it just it the cost benefit analysis just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Taylor? Taylor. Uh, did you want to start off with that? Sure. So, if um, if you're not part of online bachelor world, then n- this will probably all be new to you. If you are part of online bachelor world, then you're probably sick of hearing about this. Mm-hmm. Um, so Taylor Nolan, who has been a very outspoken person about um. You know, the way that you should treat people and be a good ally and um, has really um, tr- tried in the time that we've seen Taylor try to be a good person to a lot of different communities. Mm-hmm. But this was not always Taylor. And um it looks like roughly between 2011 to 2013 maybe i didn't i have not seen all the tweets she tweeted a lot of really terrible horrible things yeah they're really really bad stuff and like it makes rachel kirkconnell's native in, indigenous costume and in, con- confederate flag and friend in a uh, sombrero and poncho and antebellum ball all of that looked like child's play honestly mm-hmm. yeah. like it's bad yeah like rachel's uh photos of her uh cultural appropriation which might not even like i mean i mean she's probably part mexican we're kind of assuming they no one's hispanic ever hispanic of some sort that like they never addressed it like i don't know whatever um that maybe like they just put on a like a poncho that was at their house <laughs> at her house possibly right um but sh- that was all through of like ignorance and she just didn't know yes however taylor's tweets um back i think it was about when she was like in college are really bad she makes she is a very fat phobic she's um she says a lot of racist stuff against indian people asian people uh black people which what the fuck (laughs) um i mean whatever uh and transphobic um generally hating on ugly people hating on uh sexist tweets sexist yeah Mm -hmm. honestly like if you are a straight cisgendered uh attractive average or underweight white man you might not have been offended by her tweets <laughs> you otherwise have not. you were you weren't of the group that yeah. were that she was offending yeah like if you are one of if you fell into that category that kelly said and you aren't offended for other people <laughs> You you need to be. Yeah. Uh, she also didn't outwardly say anything offensive about Muslims. <laughs> Those Muslim are the categories I've got. Middle Eastern people. Yeah. <laughs> like, well. Real, like really bad. And so then like. So yeah, if you want to look them up and we, so we watched her the short response on her stories before we, uh, before we heard her um, lengthy uh response and kind of apology uh before we actually saw the tweet so we're like okay that was 10 years ago she was young and dumb and you know what 
whatever she said, I'm sure she doesn't believe it anymore. We were both ready to completely dismiss whatever had happened 10 years ago until we saw what happened. Yeah, 10 we years saw ago. what was there and we were just like, fuck, this is really bad. Like, I don't think I'm a pretty negative person and I don't, I wouldn't. I don't think I would, I would never say that stuff. No, I have said some really ignorant things. And Mm -hmm. I said the R word way longer than I should have. Oh, also people with disabilities of any sort were also um, impacted by her statements. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I, yeah, I said the R word much longer than I should have. Um, I have held some ignorant beliefs and stances. Mm -hmm. I have never said even half of what she was willing to tweet. Mhm. Yeah. I uh, and I don't know why like you she knew that the internet is forever mm-hmm. and she says she left it up because it's part of her journey to like become better, but it, was it worth it? That was a <laughs> self-centered decision because well one it ended up not f- like working the way that she wanted it to work. She's <laughs> exactly. like, no, this is part of my journey. See, like I was ignorant, but yeah, if you leave that stuff up, that makes you makes it seem like saying those things is okay, even if it is like from 2012. It's like that it still constitute hate speech that exists online. And also, a lot of people were really triggered and traumatized by reading those yeah, statements. She, she said really bad things, like. um trigger warning like telling people to kill themselves and harm themselves and um go away just like being um uh of things that are often said about people mm-hmm. um and then like her saying it in in a racist way and it just like reinforces it even more mm-hmm. so like it hurts people even if, like, she doesn't mean it today. Well, and also people who look up to her that thought she was a role, mod- role model and were impressed by how outspoken she was and how, you know, take no shit. And just, like, to see that and then see these tweets, I th- a lot of people were really impacted by it. And I don't think she thought about who she was hurting by leaving them up. And, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, it didn't work the way that she wanted it to work, if she even thought about it. Um, so if you're somebody that has this, uh, had, had said some shit, maybe you should just delete it. Uh, it, I mean, it probably exists somewhere still on the internet. Yeah. Just because there's just like scraping websites everywhere and it probably exists, but, um, it's probably just better just delete it. Mm-hmm. And then to add insult to injury, mm-hmm. Taylor did not apologize no, I, immediately. I watched her 30 minute apology video quote unquote apology video i think she says twice uh she says sorry twice but then they are quickly uh followed by a but Mm. and then just like continues on on her um person as how she is now and how she's grown and whatever is part of her journey and so it's just like she basically dismisses um uh what had happened and that she actually hurt people Mm -hmm. she did follow up i think either today or yesterday that a more sincere apology a lot i i I think she was she seemed flustered when she was doing that 30 minute apology video she seemed uh, very reactive at that Mm -hmm. time so she wasn't quite thinking she probably was not quite thinking the way that she needed she wasn't responding the way that she needed to respond Mm -hmm. And so, but that was just what came out and she she got a lot of shit because her apology video wasn't an apology. Mm -hmm. Um, So she did come out with another response, uh, actually asking for, for um, actually apologizing. Okay. Actually asking for forgiveness. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we watched the story, which was the first like insight we got to what was going on Mm -hmm. i she was defensive and i thought it made sense thinking she was just defending something that she had tweeted 10 years ago that it's like okay like yeah that was like one or a couple of things yeah it was a um, slew like honestly just more i can't have not i have not read them all and i have read 
no less than 25. Yeah, I think I've seen at least like 30, 40, or 50. <laughs> um, it was on their stories, but it was bachelornation.scoop mm-hmm. um, on Instagram. I saw a lot of them there. Mm. I think, um, I think bachelor.discuss was one as well that had just like basically compiling all this stuff to just like, you know, so that you can just see it all together. Yeah. Like, I'm sure it's not the only thing that she thought about when she was in college, but a lot of it was just hateful stuff. Yeah. And in the the story that she had um, published originally, while a long video was uploading, she blames it on because this was when she thought it was just racist tweets and i'm saying just racist tweets and Mm -hmm. i kind of mean just racist tweets because there were just so many Mm -hmm. but when she thought it was just racist tweets she blamed it on how she um wanted she like struggled with her racial identity when Mm -hmm. she was younger and so then she tried to align more with her with white friends but that doesn't explain these tweets, honestly. Like, yeah, that's uh, saying such hurtful things about Indian people, Indonesian people, Asian people. Like, there's no reason for that. Like, it doesn't matter what race you are, what race you're trying to align with. That's not an excuse. Mm-hmm. And so then at the moment before I'd read everything, I just thought it was like anti-black which her as a black person then trying to align more with white pers- white people. Like if that was like a dichotomy she had set up, which is a dichotomy that our system kind of sets up. Like in history classes, they talk about white and black and they don't really leave a lot of room for anyone else. Um, that I thought that was just like what was happening. But bringing all these other races, like I don't know why that would just have to be a white issue. I don't know. It was just, I thought it was an interesting place to, to place blame i'm willing to blame white people for a lot of stuff but i just thought it was it it seemed like a misplacement of the blame i I think she was also so she um focused on a lot of blame on white supremacy as well saying that like it's because they invented like colorism and blah i mean she like quickly said that but it was just like it seemed kind of a reach where, I mean, obviously it plays a big part in like her experience, but she can't put all the blame on white supremacy. Mm-hmm. And so it was just seemed uh, grasping at straws a little bit or trying to piece together things that don't fit perfectly. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't, I don't know. I think she was just trying to, talk her way out of it as much as she could and i think my biggest problem taking as much blame as possible yeah i think my my biggest problem with her response is that she's one of the people who has criticized other people's apologies meanwhile she comes out with the worst apology i've ever seen yeah Yeah. like ever Mm -hmm. ever like It's like when a kid hits you and they have to apologize. They're like, sorry, but like not even that good. And like, I just think for for somebody who has been doing the work, who has been showing up and trying to change and to better not just herself, but the people around her, Mm -hmm. that I would have expected more. Yeah. Yeah. Especially from a uh, mental health advocate, somebody that often um, like her job or was um she tweeted about her patience is the other thing um, she's tweeted about her patience mm-hmm. as a mental health professional sorry go on and uh, are we talking about her apology quote unquote mm. oh um yeah it's so strange how she responded because her apology was horrible her apology was horrible, but then she's seen so many of them that she should know what a good apology is. Um, she's a social media influencer, so she should totally understand like how social media works and what people will think when she does X, Y, and Z, or when people do X, Y, and Z, the audience will react this way. And it, it's really, 
it just seems like she was responding with a reaction Mm -hmm. rather than like stopping taking a minute if she just waited a day i think she would have just her response would have been a lot better yeah and but she i also understand you just want to get ahead of it and just like squash it right away but it's Maybe not always the best thing to do. You could have done that by deleting the tweets. Yeah, that too. When you found, when you realized that that was no longer who you were and you knew those tweets were there, which she said she did. Because I would have easily been like, those tweets are 10 years old. There's no way she remembered they were there. But mm-hmm. she said she knew that they were there and she intentionally left them up. Yeah. So she really could have gone ahead of this by just deleting the tweets. Mm-hmm. It is very much worth mentioning that these tweets did not come to light because there was a person who, you know, knew they were there and felt that we should know about them or whatever. It was somebody, not just somebody, I think people trying to drag Taylor, targeting Taylor. Right. And I I think we're both on the same, I mean, she mentions it and it's a very good point that right now is um, a kind of pivotal point in the discussion of the Bachelor franchise and um, their racist tendencies. And she's, you know, shining a light on it, um, along with other people as well. And I'm sure they're trying to find trash on them as well. But um, it would be very convenient for um, them to find some dirt on her now, because why didn't they find any dirt? Why, Why didn't they find this, like, in the past four years? It's It's doing it now because they want to tear somebody down yeah so like we got this information about rachel kirkconnell because she was a new contestant on the show Mm -hmm. and so people dug to see what they could find out about her Mm -hmm. when taylor was a new contestant on the show that would have been the time for these tweets to come out if they were being done in earnest where it's like who is this woman oh it turns out she super sucks right like that would be the time for them to come out but now it's that you have it's no coincidence that the two at least in our world, the two most outspoken people about these issues have been Taylor and Rachel, and they've both now been taken down. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, Rachel's, I mean, uh, Taylor's still on Instagram, but just like metaphorically taken down, like yeah, knocked off their pedestals Mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Rachel didn't do anything. Rachel didn't do anything. She did her literal job. Like she was paid to interview him. She asked him a very innocent question that as a media professional, he should have been able to easily get around. And Mm -hmm. instead he spent 13 minutes talking about it. Yeah. It's his own damn fault. (laughs) Yeah. So anyway, I don't know how much more that will be developing. I think it's probably quieting down because even if more tweets come out, like everything they're not going to be anything super shocking at this point. Mm -hmm. Taylor's already came out with multiple statements. Yeah. I think she needs to take a beat. She really, she needs to take a break. I think she went on a reality Steve's um, podcast. I think. No. Why? No. I don't know. (laughs) No. If you're going to go on a podcast and you go to like Nick Viles or Rachel Lindsay is, you know, someone I mean, he's, that like, you he know. only exists because of like, what was it? Just tea and drama. Yeah. He Don't go on his podcast. I don't get it. I've never listened to it, but I just, that's not where you go if you're trying to gain respect, I think. No. And I also... Taylor has done a lot of work. She has done a lot of change. And that's what makes the situation a lot different from what we saw with Chris and Rachel Kirkconnell, mm-hmm. where they they still are who they are. Right. And you can't just... <laughs> Rachel posted a picture of her with like some iced coffee and some books turned around. So you couldn't see this, the title on the stem of the book. So she's like... So it just looks like she's reading books, but you don't know what book she's reading. Oh my God! What mm-hmm. use is that? Was this supposed to be? She's trying to teach herself about racism. Which it was just kind of. It was just a. I mean, she said she was just um, enjoying some coffee, and it, I don't know. But there was books in the background, probably to insinuate that she's um, reading. Mm. Um, she has um, shared resources, okay. um, like on her stories and stuff like that. So it she it does look like she's putting some effort into improving herself and um, sharing knowledge within her. Um, her um, audience. Sure. Okay. Her, that's great. Um, and so that's great. I don't know if anybody clicks on them, but you know, at least she's 
doing something about it. And it, I mean, it does. Hopefully, people are wanting to improve themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they're not, at least, I mean, the only thing she can really do is improve herself. Um, so hopefully, she really is doing that and taking to heart the things that she's. Hopefully, she is consuming the things that she's linking to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, and then learning from it so that in a few years we can say that she has also done the work, you know? Mm. Yeah. All right. Anything else about the Taylor situation? No, I think that's about it. Um, I did uh, write a program to keep track of uh, Taylor's uh, followers to just see how it's going for the past, like, 12 hours or so. And it seems like every, like, Five minutes or so, she's lo- about every minute she's losing a follower. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> nah, that sucks. I mean, I think. I mean, she kind of. I mean, she kind of did to herself. She kind of did to herself. Um, and it's not forever. She, I think she's going to keep a lot of her audience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think it's going to really affect her in the very long term. Yeah. It'll just set her back like a tiny bit. So. I still feel very mixed feelings about the situation. Like, I don't know how to feel. So I haven't unfollowed her, but I also don't, I don't know if I'm going to continue to follow her Mm -hmm. either. Like, I I don't really know how to feel about the situation. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I just did it. So I unfollow a lot of people that do not provide a lot of, uh, more like actual content and like provoking um content on mm. my feed mm. so like rachel nope um hannah g hannah brown a lot of people that like and ben higgins like like just don't provide much content just yeah. like they provide selfies oh, okay yeah. that's it uh or photos of what they're doing with their friends it's like i don't care what you're doing i don't care how you look i don't know i don't care what you're wearing um, they don't ever speak up. They didn't say anything about um, uh, the Chris Harrison's issue. They didn't say anything about the Rachel uh, Connell issue or Rachel Lindsay or uh, Taylor. They don't say anything. Mm. And so they're just like, they're just, they're just like Barbies. And yeah. Barbie's even better. She has a career. She has multiple <laughs> careers and she's um, an advocate. She has black, actually black, black friends. And like, <laughs> so. <laughs> they're they're worse than Barbie. Oh, you're so funny. I truly believe Barbie's a feminist. Not the Barbie doll, the one that like you pulled the string on her back and she said things like math is hard because that was an anti-feminist Barbie. But the other ones I think are feminists. Maybe, I guess. I mean, Barbie scientists, I'm sure that's like helps a little bit. I think there was a some a woman that was trying to get Barbie to be a geologist for like I think most of her life and she finally got her to be a geologist. That's so exciting. Yeah. I would like to see short Barbie and chubby Barbie. Mhm. Right? Mhm. So, we do have Barbie in other races. She has different names cuz, you know, and then short Barbie would obviously not be named Barbie and chubby Barbie could still be called Barbie. Sure. It could still be Barbie. Yeah. Same with Ken. We need to see Chubby Ken. We need to see Chubby Ken and Short Ken. Mm-hmm. All right, tell them. Yeah, let's do it. So I just want—I really just want to say it right off the bat because I don't want to f- take a chance. We're going to forget. They cut out Heather. Mm-hmm. Heather was there. Yeah. If you did not, like, I, if I you, wasn't noticing it until you you mentioned somebody else noticed it. And it, yeah, it's only because somebody else on Twitter noticed it. And then once you see it, like you see the back of Heather's head mm-hmm. so many times, mm-hmm. you never see Heather's face. Yeah, nobody's hair is as long as Heather's. And long and straight and platinum blonde. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a couple times where you see the outline of her face and it's absolutely Heather. Yeah, you can see one where she's like looking to mm-hmm. the side. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's definitely Heather. Mm-hmm. And they worked hard to cut her out. Like when Kit was talking, Kit was all the way far left to the screen instead of being centered mm-hmm. because Heather was sitting right next to her. Yeah, and they cropped it in. <laughs> it's so strange but why they decided to do that. Honestly, thank you for not making us watch whatever segment you filmed with Heather. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Like, yeah. I'm over it. I'm done. And they knew we were done. And like, thank you. Mm-hmm. It, 
yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't. Yeah. I don't even know how Heather got out of that that situation of The Bachelor um, with more followers on Instagram. Like, I don't know how she had more. Yeah, it's strange. But there were clearly people listening to us in the editing team because Heather was cropped out because that plot line clearly did not go over well. Um, we saw as little of Chris Harrison as we've ever seen in one of these episodes. Hmm. Even with there not being an audience for them to cut to, there was still so little content from Chris Harrison during the segment. It was really focused on the women. Um, we got several people in the hot seat. We don't usually get this many people in the hot seat. I mean, yeah, maybe they typically have this many people in the hot seat and they just don't uh, actually air it. Um, and then this time they just had a bunch of people up there and they also cut to a lot of um, their experience on the like basically f- past footage that we've already seen. So it's mm-hmm. like there's even more content that mm-hmm. we we saw more content that they probably actually film mm-hmm. um, but don't see. We didn't have to watch Victoria on the hot seat, which I'm sure was a thing I, they filmed. I we didn't have to watch it. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Um, and they showed us some conflict with Katie, which basically takes her out of the running of being Bachelorette. And we got really great Bachelorette reels for both Piper and Abigail. So that's encouraging. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't see anybody else up there, right? So the people that were in the hot seat oh, were Brittany. Brittany, Katie, Abigail, Pro- Piper, and Serena P. Mm. But Serena P, there was something about her edit, like in the reel that they showed that I didn't think looked like they were setting her up to be the Bachelor. I don't think so. It seemed, I mean, they barely showed her um, before actually talking about her. Mm. Like she didn't, I, I don't know if she actually said anything of um, to the other women uh, during the other segments, but it seemed like I didn't hear anything from her until it was her turn. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So they, um, at the beginning, in, I mean, it's not that it was like oversized font, but they usually just have like a little thing in the corner that says previously recorded Mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. But this one's like previously recorded on February 4th, 2020, going fully across the screen to make sure that nobody got confused that this was recorded after the incident with Chris Harrison. Yeah, that's really funny. (laughs) Um, Also... My new obsession is noticing how young people part their hair down the middle. I think it looks weird because <laughs> once once the part, um, the middle part gets down to where it needs to stop, mm-hmm. that part looks really weird. Where yeah. like that other part look is going back and the other ones are going sideways. And like, I don't know how people, I don't know. It's, it looks weird to me. I also think, I think it looks weird when people look down and you just like, there's just like a straight line down the center of their head. Yeah. It's like, it's a little bit weird. Uh, like I think a center part should go like all the way down the back. <laughs> I feel like that's how it should go, but then it stops. <laughs> the only people who didn't have their hair center parted were Ryan, Katie and Victoria. Yeah. Um, and so I noticed, I started noticing that during the season once I learned that um, Gen Z parts their hair down the center and thinks that everyone should, um, which I disagree. Um, yeah, but shut, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> uh, I noticed that like on rose ceremony nights, hmm. most people parted their hair down the middle. It's so weird. And then the next day they'd have the hair parted on the side. So it's like side parts are casual and center parts are formal. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out no. what's going on in these children's heads. <laughs> Middle parts are weird. <laughs> Do you want to get murdered by Ted Bundy? Ted Bundy. Hmm? Straight b- brown hair parted down the middle. Ted Bundy. Um, what's it called? Copycats. Mm-hmm. 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 Think about it. Got to be careful. Side parts are safety parts. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I think you want to talk about where they start off. Sure. Uh, I think they start out with MJ and Jasenia. That's the first thing I have. Uh, so they are talking about their drama. Um, neither of them really back down from what they initially said. I think M- MJ said that she did own it um, to Matt James when she finally talked to him. We didn't see that. 
we didn't see that. And she acted like Jasenia was supposed to have known that. Yeah. She's like, well, I did own it. And you still went off on me or whatever. It's like, well, if you had a private conversation with Matt James about it and you did not tell Jasenia about that, Mm -hmm. then how was she supposed to know? Right. Uh, so Jasenia was like, but like you, like you still haven't owned it, and mm-hmm. so saying that you owned it when you talked to Matt James is still not owning it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know because like she didn't own it when she was talking to Jasenia, mm-hmm. and we didn't see her owning it when she was talking to Matt. So as far as we know, she didn't come forward yeah, saying that she did, did do or say these things, and she might just be saying that she owned it, own, owned what she did. Um, the bullying um just to she like ah uh, sorry so she could have just said that she owned it up um when she was talking to matt james so that she can just say that um yeah. they just didn't air it but i yeah. did it you yeah know? but we don't know we'll never know but it is worth noting that mari defended mj as not fake she's like i was mj's roommate and i can tell you the mj you see is the mj you get right and defended her as not being fake Yes. Not not defending that sh- not defending her for bullying, but correct. And there are some other people that were like, "How could you defend her?" It's like, "Well, well, well I'm not defending her bullying. I'm mm-hmm. defending her certain parts of her, her character. Her yeah, her being yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, the next thing I have is Ryan, but my notes are really jumbled about trying to understand what exactly happened in the situation. So it was Ryan, Amari, and Victoria. There was like a dialogue happening there. Um, Trialogue. Three people. Ryan is a dancer. Yes. And she was very hurt that, uh, Victoria would call her a hoe. Or a slore or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she called her that. And a shady bitch. Um, just because she was a dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, and not like, um, probably not a, um, what's it called? Halftime show girl or something like oh, that. Oh, even though it doesn't also, matter. She's a dancer slash choreographer. That's like a real job. Right. And she provides art and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's, and she's like, like, that's my job. Like, why mm-hmm. are you calling me like, a slut? No. A whore? Um, a hoe. Ho, a hoe. And a shady bitch. Yeah, because of my job. Um, and Victoria responds, are you a sensitive person? Oh my god. Which is absolutely just a way to just kind of gloss over it. Ask like, why are you offended? Basically. Yeah. That's what it feels like to me. It's like, like I, and then she goes into saying like, well, I've received so much hate. Like, why can't you just get over it? Like, I've, I've received so much worse stuff. It's like, I don't care what's going on with you. You are the cause of my discomfort. It's like, why are you even talking about it? Why don't you get over it? It's like, because we're talking about it right now. Mm-hmm. He asked us about the situation. We're talking about it right now. I'm not. He said, she, she also said, like, I am over it, but we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. That's why we are point. talking about it. It's why we're here today. Yeah. Yeah. So, first of all. I don't think anyone should get hate. Like, I think everyone should just mind their own damn business mm-hmm. and, like, not directly message anyone with hateful mar- remarks. Mm-hmm. That, that's my blanket statement. You can call people out, but you don't need to be sending hateful things to their inbox. Okay. That being said, Victoria basically says, well... I got harassed online for the shitty things I did. And you must just be sensitive if you can't handle me harassing you. It's like, but you, you got harassed for being a shitty person. Like she's being harassed for existing. (laughs) Yeah. She said, uh, Ryan said, or Victoria's like asking, why can't you just get over it? Like people call me these things all the time, like online. And, and like people are calling me bully all the time online. Like, why can't, why is it over? It's like, and then Ryan responds like, well, maybe you actually were bullying people, <laughs> which is like, you know, it's kind of comparing like this thing that's like not real. I am not a hoe and you, and you were actually bullying and mm-hmm. they were calling you a bully. Mm-hmm. Well, that might actually be true when you just made this thing up about me being a hoe. Yeah. Like, how is that the same at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, Victoria, you're so dumb. And I got harassed for things that I did. Why can't you handle being harassed by me doing things to you? I don't know. And calling you things that you aren't. 
Yeah. Oh my god. That's ridiculous. <sighs> and then Victoria's just still just a shitty person. Yes. She was like lower key here, but still just like not understanding that she did anything wrong. And then Katie and Victoria. Mm -hmm. Um, Victoria kind of apologizes and Katie kind of accepts it. Yeah, it did. I I think that's as sincere as a a, of a apology that you'll get out of Victoria. I missed the part where she apologized, and I just heard Katie saying, "I accept your apology." I was like, "Okay, I guess Victoria apologized." Yeah, I I heard the apology. I think it sounded sincere. (laughs) Okay. Um, I think uh, Katie uh, first said that like it was really hard seeing herself being called disgusting. Um, on national television, you know, um, and I think Victoria actually like apologizes to for all the I don't know bad things that she called her. Mm-hmm. So, okay. And is this where Katie says something about karma? I didn't see that. Okay, I didn't hear it either. I mean, I see I saw other people referencing to it online, but well, I think it was something about like the how she was getting bullied online for the things that she said and she's done but it's like yeah but you that's what you've done and what you've said and maybe that's karma a little bit well and then chelsea references katie saying the thing about karma so it must be something that was said during the women tell all we both just missed it while taking notes Mm -hmm. but chelsea says she doesn't agree that they all deserve to have people hate on them online um, and Katie says Chelsea was friends with the mean girls. And so maybe that's why she thinks that. Mm-hmm. And then Chelsea says that Katie's the one that made it toxic. And then Piper also disagrees with Katie's handling of the situation. Mm-hmm. So I, this is where I was kind of almost getting where the, the women that didn't quite understand, like understand that it was being so toxic in the house um, that because they didn't, quite see it as being so toxic that maybe they should have been asked first like about like hey do you guys feel this way i think if it was like a discussion as a house like do you guys feel this way because i'm feeling this way because katie's not the only person that's feeling this Mm -hmm. i think justenia backs her up that like Mm -hmm. it was pretty toxic in the house like seeing what you guys were saying and stuff so it wasn't just her but I think it would it would have been really great for them to all talk together about it. Um, and Katie was also saying like right away, it's like they're making they're they're talking about this thing about um, Brittany that could like ruin her life, mm-hmm. you know. And she wanted to like take care of it right away, which is absolutely I think a very reasonable thing to want to do. Yeah, Kayla does. Kayla says though it should have been a dialogue mm-hmm. before they brought it to Matt. Like they, sh- it should have been a conversation that they had between the women in the house mm-hmm. before it got taken to Matt. Which I understand that point of view. That's fair. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get that at first. But then I guess if so many people in the house really didn't think that there was that big of an issue, then maybe they should have talked about it. Then it obviously wasn't so obvious. It wasn't as obvious as what they showed us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very obvious to us. Also, just because you were mentioning thing about like the Britney situation, I had forgotten and I didn't go back and watch the the previews like for the season, like the season previews, like all the way back then. Um, what's this like nine weeks ago now? Mm-hmm. But it sounds really familiar of having um Katie in the previews spreading the rumor about Britney and calling her a sugar baby. Is that what you remember? Somebody pointed out, and then as soon as they said that, I was like, oh my god, yes. I remember somebody calling her a sugar baby, and then we never actually saw that in the episodes. Mm. So it has to be someone that they didn't want us to have a negative opinion about. Really? And at this point, they wanted Katie to be the Bachelorette. Maybe, yeah. So at this point, um, so at this point in the episode, it seemed like everybody was kind of ganging up on Katie, kind of Mm -hmm. making it seem like maybe she wasn't totally in the right Mm -hmm. um, on this um drama Mm -hmm. so it kind of left things in the air and you know she looked a little defensive and other people were kind of like saying that her experience was not um the truth um and like yeah so like we don't know what each person lived in the house so we can't like we can't say 
truths, but... Um, but I do think everyone owe, owes Serena C. at least somewhat of an apology. Because people got real angry about Serena C. Oh, Serena C., yeah. And the way that she treated Katie. Mm -hmm. But it seems like Serena C. was not the only one that felt this way about Katie. And she's just the only one they showed saying things about Katie. Mm -hmm. And then people bringing her race and her looks into Mm -hmm. their attacks against her, which is Mm -hmm. so bad. Like, it's very disappointing. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, okay, the next thing I have is Brittany in the hot seat. Mm-hmm. So it's bad enough that The Bachelor decided to air anything related to the storyline with Brittany. They didn't have to. They could. We saw how they can edit Heather, Heather out. They could easily have figured out how to edit this whole storyline out. We saw all the stuff they edited out throughout the entire season. Mm-hmm. We saw it. Yeah, the cut out an entire part portion of a group date yeah multiple group dates as far as i can tell plus the existence of taisha and jojo anywhere in the season were they only on there once i have no idea because we never saw them Mm -hmm. um so they could have figured out how to cut out the storyline but they didn't they chose to keep the storyline in and promote it making us think that this was like a real thing rather than a rumor yeah and then put britney in the hot seat to clearly be re-traumatized by the situation. Like, mm-hmm. she was still very, like, upset about it. Yeah. Uh, she also mentions that, you know, if she Googles her name, that, like, this thing comes up. And that is, like, if that is, if she's, she is a model. And so if people are Googling her for jobs, that's going to pop up. And if you don't know how, like, it's, it's, almost too late for that and luckily the google's algorithm for showing results is a living thing and it can be changed through like methods so like um creating your own website creating like uh, expanding your brand on instagram and tiktok and having those things come up when your name is googled instead of these um um E online, ET, and uh, EW websites having this uh, article written about Britney being pros- possibly a uh, high end escort, being like a result of her thing. Like mm-hmm. all of that requires a lot of work. There is somebody I forget exactly what happened, but I think she had some uh, something happened to her where her results were horrible. And then mm-hmm. there are actually companies that do like. Um, mm-hmm like re-reputation counseling uh, and like management and will help you build your, make a website, make multiple websites for you Mm -hmm. to like push that, those stuff down. Mm -hmm. But then that costs thousands and thousands Mm -hmm. of dollars for someone to do that. And I think the bachelor should have to pay to get this shit done because they fucked up her life. Yes. A hundred percent agree. Yes. Like, you know what the first thing I do when I like hire contractors, I Google them. I find them on like, um, like on Facebook and see if like their image is actually the same image on on Upwork to make that's a the where you find talent and stuff like that. Um, because we've been fucked over by somebody not actually being the person on Upwork, <gasps> and then like it's like oh this person um stole my account and it has been billing you, uh, and like. In the, if you haven't noticed, they've stolen about like a hundred, couple hundred dollars from you. It's like I didn't notice that. Thank you for letting me know. And like you know, you have to like make sure. Oh shoot! So you have to Google people. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And so like yeah, if Brittany's sucks. trying to find a job, she's gonna be Googled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then again, Anna is the only person in this entire season who takes any responsibility and accountability for what she's done. And it doesn't excuse anything she said um, in any way. Um, but she says, you know, she's so, so, so sorry that she takes full responsibility. She doesn't get defensive when people ask her questions mm-hmm. uh, about it. And you know, she's like, I really, I don't have good answers. All I can say, I was, I was insecure. I was angry. Mm-hmm. Like, like she it's, handled- it's all her fault. She didn't say it was anybody else's fault. Yeah. She handles it as well as a person honestly could handle fucking up this much. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Brittany's hurt that Anna didn't reach out to her, yeah. 
which I get from Brittany's perspective and then also from Anna's perspective, what do you say? Yeah. Right? Like, what do you say? Mm-hmm. Like, there's not there's- enough apologies in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So Brett accepts her apology, though. Brittany accepts her apology. Yeah. I mean, it's... She's got to, like, move on. Yeah. And she uh, she says, like, she doesn't want Anna getting hate. She doesn't want anyone getting hate. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is such then, a grown-up thing to do. I know, Which right? thing to do. I love Brittany. I don't know her, but I love her. Um, <laughs> she also makes it a point to say, like, no one should also feel bad about being a sex worker. Like, if that's what you do, that's what you do, and that's fine. She's like, that's mm-hmm. just not me. Yeah. Yeah. We did throw that in just because that was a that was a conversation that people mm-hmm. were having online about that. And I hope that that's changed some people's minds about it mm-hmm. because there's, there's just so much stigma around that profession. Well, and here's the thing. If all you ever hear is that like sex work is bad and you hear them being called prostitutes and mm-hmm. like being disregarded as humans, basically, mm-hmm. um, then like you probably never think about it any other way. Like if that's the only narrative you've ever heard, and then finally someone's like, hey, you shouldn't feel bad about this. And you're like, oh, shit, I never thought about the fact that, like, they shouldn't feel bad about their jobs. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I I had, but the first time that it was presented to me, like, I remember that, like, a light bulb moment of, like, oh, yeah, these are people and this is a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Like, it's a job like any other job where some of them like their job. And mm-hmm. want to be doing it. Yeah. Some of them fucking hate their job and don't want to be doing it, but need money. And some of them don't really care. They just go to work. They do their job. They mm-hmm. get their money, and they're kind of indifferent about it, just like literally any other job. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, deleted scenes. Yeah, this would have been like interesting <laughs> to watch. These things are actually way more entertaining than any of the shit they actually showed. I wouldn't say any of the shit they showed, but like. I would have much rather watched this stuff than the drama that we watched. Yeah, there is the... I don't know if it was, like, traumatizing. Like, I don't know. Maybe, like, half the people didn't participate or something. But there was a scene where they... uh, Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, I just shivered a lot. Uh, So there's a thing where there's, like, a box. And then there's bugs in it. And then they had to reach for a ring that was inside that box. No ring is worth that. I love my engagement ring, baby. I am not pulling it out of a box full of bugs. Okay, I'll get it for you. Thank you. Um, so you can't, they couldn't see what was inside the box, but then on the other side, it was like see-through, so then the filming, they could see them reaching into a box with all these bugs inside mm-hmm. uh, to reach for a ring, and like you don't know what's there, and then like you don't, when you start, when something starts touching you that you don't see, obviously it's very um, scary. Ugh. Um, so it was really funny. It was funny. No, it was, no, it wasn't. For sure. I didn't think it was funny. I didn't. <laughs> no. I mean, like doing, making them do that, but then their reactions were funny. No, none of it was funny. I, I just... thought it was funny. <laughs> um, but then we only saw like, like five women do it. And I feel like they kind of just, I think they couldn't get enough people to actually do it, to actually air it. Did you want them to show every single woman doing it? I don't know. Oh. It would be cool to see like a woman just be like, oh, there's a, uh, I mean, just see one of the uh, women just reach in there. It's like, oh, there's a bug on me, whatever. And just grab it. I was like, I got it. No big deal. I mean, they're not they're not going to show those people, though. It shows like that they're a badass. (laughs) I mean, I think that's as important to see that like when when some of them are being wimpy. Sure. But the bachelors don't care what's important to see. I know. (laughs) That's why I want to see it. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Probably whatever The Bachelor doesn't want me to see, I probably think is more interesting. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, And then I think this next one was on the date where they had the bit, the date that Ben Higgins planned. It's like, let's fall in love. The fall. Yeah, the fall in love. This was all fall themed. Uh-huh. And they had to eat a bunch of pancakes, which apparently like really really dense pancakes yeah i wonder if they're just supposed to be regular pancakes but then they just did a really bad job making them i saw online that unrelated to the bachelor that there was a pancake eating contest where a person died 
because like the pancakes were like so dense they like cemented in her throat and she couldn't breathe what? yeah so don't ever do a pancake eating contest what? that's the lesson here okay just pie eating contest yes what those about, are fine what about cake it depends on how dense the cake is mm. mm-hmm. okay i feel like if you had enough syrup for the pancakes it should like break them down but it also Probably. needs time to break them down uh-huh and then they had to chug a, oh, that wasn't a pint. How much was that? A mug of beer? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Victoria cheated in both of these events. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, like in the women tell all, Chris was like, yeah, I agree with you, Victoria. That was the right thing to do. It's like, no, it wasn't. Cheating is wrong. Cheating is wrong. And like everyone can't cheat. You, Everyone can't cheat or it doesn't work. Like, what's the point of doing anything if everyone's just going to cheat? Yeah. So if everyone can't cheat, then one person can't cheat. And just go fuck yourselves, Chris and Victoria. Yeah. Fire Chris Harrison. Fire Victoria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does she do? She runs her own beauty brand. Fire herself. <laughs> uh, and then they... Sh- so I think we talked about it a little bit um, when it happened. But there was a day date to one of one of the more recent group dates i think one of the last ones Uh, because all we saw was the women just hanging out at night on the group date we're like huh was there not like a morning date to this yeah and there was and it just turned out to be hide and seek which actually looks kind of fun but at at the same time like probably the cheapest date uh, that they can do um, because it was just hey why don't you guys just go in the woods and find a game to play I yeah I didn't think it looked fun because it was just Matt hid and then once somebody found him the game was over yeah. and that's not how that, hide and seek works exactly so like I didn't like the the premise <laughs> is a is, sounds fun but then how they executed it was very bad mm-hmm. because yeah often hide and seek is at least two rounds at least two rounds um, and then. Everybody is made aware that the that everybody is found. There also like has to be an established perimeter. You That's can't just true. walk around forever like Kit apparently had to do. Yeah, Kit got lost. <laughs> and like there were cameras with her. There's probably a producer there too, and they probably knew where they were. Um, but they didn't help her. Yeah, they didn't let her know that it's over. Yeah, exactly. So everybody else is sitting in a hot tub because it's done, and Kit's just wandering around. Yeah, for like half where an she hour. would. Much rather be in the hot tub, I am sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And then I actually missed the next one. So you have to tell us about it. The raw egg shots. Yeah, they were taking shots of raw eggs. And it was the one with the boxing champion. It was a boxing date. Okay. Um, And they were just probably doing this because in Rocky, he drank some raw eggs or whatever. Uh, And so he did it and everybody was doing it and uh katie threw up because she was already gagging before she even do it because um uh, before she did it uh because just thinking about it i could totally yeah. understand like the texture and stuff is not great yeah so she threw up um i think everybody else did it pretty well oh mm-hmm. kit threw it over her shoulder <laughs> <laughs> that's smart yeah i actually agree with that cheating because this could like you could get sick you yeah. can get salmonella yeah you can yeah if you know you're gonna throw up Fuck it. Don't make yourself throw up. Yes. People should not have to do things that's going to compromise their health or safety. Yeah. Um, So if Victoria was afraid of choking on a pancake and dying or drowning in the beer, then it was fine for her to cheat. But otherwise, no. Drowning in the beer. (laughs) (laughs) And then Katie's in the hot seat. Mm -hmm. And I didn't write down anything other than her. The reel that they showed was clearly edited with the idea that she could be the next Bachelorette. Yeah, like possibly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because this was filmed, again, February 4th before everything went down. And now they're probably like, if we have a white Bachelorette, we got to choose real carefully. (laughs) Yeah. Um, She did say something that like about the pandemic and how she's like kind of had some introspection about. And now she's like 100, 110% herself now. And she's, uh, but Matt James was the very first person to that she dated um, where she was 110% herself. And it, she says it sucks that um, she um, was rejected. 
Hmm. Uh, but then like that's how you fucking that's what dating is yeah either you get rejected or you reject them like that's yeah or you end up together forever or yeah. maybe for a while which like happens to very few people mm-hmm. okay. yeah so like it that is what dating is yes yeah you know you eventually be are as much of yourself as you are <laughs> does, it, does that make sense sure you are yourself as much as you can be mm-hmm um or as much as you know you are um and then you see if that person likes you or not Mm -hmm. and matt james just didn't like that part of you and that's okay yeah i mean the the odds were against you yeah it's like a couple billion people in the world well yeah and there was also like 30 plus other women that he was dating so Mm -hmm. the odds weren't good for you to win this yeah. Uh, she also did mention that she for she wasn't paying attention to the other relationships as well. Uh, and I think that might stem from, um, I, I think I mentioned it before, I think, I think it was Jasenia that said it, that they had a pact amongst the women to not talk about, mm-hmm. or maybe it was uh, Chelsea, uh, to, for the women to not talk about their like more specific interactions with Matt James so that they don't get jealous or anything like that. So then it is, it might be a little bit more difficult to understand where the other women's relationships are with Matt James yeah, and like kind of see like, um, Oh, maybe my relationship isn't that strong. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Thank you. You're welcome. So smart. <laughs> Abigail in the hot seat. Yeah. I just wrote, she got a really good edit. Okay, I have more about her, so I'm glad that we have a trade-off here. Okay. So Abigail expresses that she, I mean, yes, she did also get a great edit. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, She has a lot of what-ifs, right, like with with Matt James, Mm -hmm. that what if she had had a one-on-one date with him? Like if they had had such a great connection for so long without that one-on-one time, what Mm -hmm. if she had had hours to spend with him? Yeah then what could the outcome have been? Um, She also discusses, or I mean, I think Chris brings up and she elaborates on the impact that her being on The Bachelor has had on the deaf community. Mm -hmm. So we learn a few things from this conversation. Um, We learn that there are two different ways to talk about the deaf community. There's lowercase d and uppercase d, or capital D. Okay. And so the lowercase d is what Abigail is, where she um, was born completely deaf without her cochlear implant. She can't hear anything, but she does not know sign language. She doesn't use sign language, so I okay. don't know if she knows it or not. Okay, she doesn't, yeah, she doesn't use sign language. Um, she communicates through speaking, mm-hmm. um, whereas capital D, deaf community, um, communicate through sign language. So she kind of talks about how she hasn't really fit in with the hearing community. She's like in a gray area community. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they talk about the um, deaf community, like the impact it had on them to like, it's on many of them to be represented in this way in like a romantic way in a sexy way, mm-hmm. you know, or it's like, that's not, that's not something I've ever seen before and I can only imagine if you're a member of that community like how that would feel to finally see yourself as like a love interest like not even like a love interest in a movie but like a real life love interest Mm -hmm. like she got the first impression rose yeah that like she is desirable Mm -hmm. to somebody uh and amongst all these other beautiful women that this I don't want to say despite um but with her um disability like he still gave her a first impression rose like that he saw potential in her yeah over all these other women and it seemed like it wasn't really in spite of it was partially because of like i think that was the thing he liked about her that's what he said yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so i don't know i think there's a really strong chance that abigail will be the next bachelorette and i I mean i've said many times i think that'd be a good choice she's beautiful and um probably 
I don't strong. I honestly don't know that much. We about don't. Her. Then that's the thing. It's like a lot of people. I've seen people saying online that like Abigail's too boring. It's like how do you know she's boring? We don't know anything about her. Yeah. Like we've seen very little of her or most of the women on the show. Honestly, I mean, from what we saw, it's like pretty good. I mean, like she tried to be cute with Matt James when like the one time we saw them together. Um, she got her first impression role, so it has to be like something there. Um, she spoke her mind a little bit whenever, um, like it had at least affected her. You know, like mm-hmm. I just really, I think later on when she's like, "When the fuck am I gonna get a one on one date?" She's like, "I just really wish I could just get this one one on one date." Like, what yeah. the fuck's going on? Um, so like, I don't. I think it's from what we know. It's like. From what we've seen, it's good. Yeah, then that's all we can go off of. But right now, from what we've seen and from, like, we haven't heard anything negative about her. It does look like the she on the show. may have, well, maybe that was just a group date or something. But um, there was, Chelsea, I think, posted a video of, um, like, it was definitely MJ because of her hair. I knew that she was there. Abigail, Jacinia, and Chelsea were just, like, dancing in front of the hotel altogether saying like it's see it's not so toxic or whatever but it's just like that group of them that are having oh, fun okay so it wasn't all the women having fun yeah well and was it chelsea that like labeled it see it's not so toxic yeah something like that okay so then abigail had nothing to do with that that caption right right but then so it could have either just been a group date that they were all on mm-hmm. or she was part of that friend group yeah in the house so maybe she was part of the drama that was actually cut out. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. That's possible. We'll never know. Yeah. Piper? Yeah, Piper. So she's in the hot seat. She also gets a really nice bachelorette reel. Mm-hmm. She says she was in love with Matt James, that it wasn't just falling in love, that it was full on in love 100%. She was there and mm-hmm. ready to like proceed with a relationship. Yeah. Um, she was also blindsided too. Um, just like Katie said, like she didn't really pay attention to the other relationships going on. And, you know, like what I said before, like maybe it's because they didn't talk about the relationship with Matt James with each other. Um, did you have anything else? Um, just that she is glad she did it, but in the, at that time she wasn't. Oh, right. Cause she walked out. It wasn't like, it was a little, her, her exit was a little, um, abrupt cold a yeah. little cold okay. where she was just kind of like walked out um did she hug him no she just walked out i think yeah so she um you know i think she was just processing it mm-hmm. and then just like yeah wanted to get out which i get it. i would not want to hug someone that just broke up with me like that you know mm-hmm. or especially that was the week before hometowns right mm-hmm. yeah yeah i and you like, thought that you're he was going to be meeting your family Right? Like you thought you were about to bring this guy home to your family and then he breaks up with you. I'm not hugging him. We're done. Yeah. Peace out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Serena P? Yeah. So she's in the hot seat. She gets emotional watching her reel. And I I don't know what it was about her reel that made me not think it was a Bachelorette edit. I mean, but they also, they know how to manipulate these things. Like the music they play or the order that they show the videos or whatever. There was just something about it that didn't feel like a bachelorette reel to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But she says it was a, basically it was a difficult decision to not continue with Matt, but that she stands by it, that it was the right decision. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I didn't have much about her. Okay, that's all I had. Okay. Matt? Matt. So Matt comes out with this full beard, and the women were more into it than I expected. Yeah, I think (laughs) more of them were interested in it, like, liked it more than hated it. Yeah. Uh, Which I think is kind of surprising, because I don't like it. Yeah, me neither. Um, Yeah, I think it just needs a little cleaned up. It's just, like, it's too bushy. Too bushy. It's too uncapped. It's, like, it's too round for his face. And like, if you're quarantining at home and your beard looks like that, no problem. Yeah, you're going to national TV. Clean it. Got to groom man. it up a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't have to be clean shaven, but you got to groom it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Serena C addresses him and just says that she hopes that watching it back didn't change his impression of them. And he says that um, he 
he doesn't think any of them are bad people, even Victoria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think their interaction was a little weird. I think he said that he wished he could have done more um, for her. Yeah, I didn't quite understand what he was saying there. Yeah, I don't know if it was like to help her feel more comfortable so that she didn't have to bully people or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, she said she was hurt, though, um, watching him say that he needed to reflect after sending her home. That basically, like, he had kept her around and that was clearly a bad decision so now he needs to reflect going forward which to us made total sense but it was hurtful to her so he apologizes and says he truly has nothing bad to say about her Mm -hmm. which i don't know how you can watch back that back and think that but i also think he now sees how manipulative this show is and i don't think he feels like he can fully trust anything on the show because i feel like i can't fully trust anything on the show anymore right um i think he also owes a little bit to her with the video of him golfing with his buddies and Mm. how they were, Mm. how that one friend um, was making fun of her. And then the other friends were laughing Mm -hmm. at those comments. Uh, So I I think that maybe he was trying to dance a line there Mm. where he wanted to make sure that he didn't further any, um, uh, I don't know, negative feelings. Sure. With, I mean, not their relationship, but like their their interactions to mm-hmm. be not not negative. And I like I truly think that he doesn't want to make people feel bad, mm-hmm. right? And so it probably was hard for him to watch all of this and like see in ways that he might have contributed to making people feel bad. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris brings up Matt kissing with his eyes open. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then they pulled up a lot of the footage of this, which is really awkward back to back. And he says that it's on purpose because um, he's like, you know, when you're in the moment and like, she's just like this close to you, you know, and you're just like admiring how pretty she is. And it's like, what? And so me and Kelly tried to do this <laughs> last night and we were kissing each other like right before going to sleep. And it's like, I see you, but like I kind of don't see you at the same time. So I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Like I see four eyes on you. So okay. it's like it does it's not like like yeah, you're beautiful, but like at this rate at this like um distance, like I can barely see anything. Yeah, you, everything's honest, blurry. Like yeah, at that distance, you could be anyone. Like I can't see you. Rick, I don't know that you're Ryan at that distance. <laughs> I yeah. know the Orion because I saw you going into the kiss. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be weird if there was someone else in our bedroom, let alone our bed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there was nothing particularly sexy about it for me. I also didn't, I had no feelings about it because I couldn't see that your eyes were open. And so it was, you were also backlit maybe, but yeah. I, I don't think so. I was above you. Okay. I don't know. Part. I didn't really, it was, it was fine for me either way. <laughs> Feeling a little bit lazier just to keep my eyes open. <laughs> it's harder to keep your eyes open. Because it's like opposite of your it's instinct. Just like, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he says it was intentional. But now watching it back, he sees how weird it is. And he's not going to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's <sighs> so good. funny. That's good. And then they play the bloopers, which the only thing I'm going to point out is that apparently Jojo and Taisha were there. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, why didn't... like? why not <laughs> right i when, don't get it when did this happen like i don't even know where this fits into the season at all it, it's like they decided that oh you know what we're just gonna do drama they filmed a good edit of the bachelor and then a bad like a dra- like a drama negative edit and then a good positive edit and then they just decided only negative and then i I feel like there's so much stuff that they probably filmed and did not show. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. The show is bogus. The show sucks. Yeah. Uh, and if I agree, if it's a white bachelorette, probably shouldn't watch it. I can't think of a white bachelorette that I'd want to watch. Mm-hmm. I can't either. Maybe Becca. 
Becca Kufrin. No, we already watched her. She got her chance. Second chance. No. Uh, no, I'm done. I already watched her boring ass for an entire 12 episodes. Well, at least she's maybe going into it with like, all right, who do you who did you vote for in 2020? Who did you vote for in 2016? Oh, if she's going to get political, I'll watch it. <laughs> But otherwise, no, we already watched her. She got her chance. She ruined it. She ruined her chance. Yeah, I can't think of another white woman (laughs) from the franchise. Yeah. Also, I just honestly can't think of anyone from the franchise that's not from the season right now. Mm. So, like, do you know Pilot Pete was just last year? I know. Um, (laughs) Just last year today, um, Claire... Crowley was announced as a bachelorette. That is nuts. This past year has been absolutely nuts. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't make any sense. God. Time doesn't seem real. Doesn't. Okay. Stats or not yet? Okay, I got you. So you can follow us on Roses and Thorns on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we uh, it's a uh, Roses and Thorns Pod. Uh, you can add us on the Clubhouse. At Roses and Thorns, just those, not and pod. Uh, and that's about it. Also, rate, review, and subscribe, please. That really helps us in our ratings and helps us show up on people's um, things. There's already so many people doing Bachelor podcasts that just any review, I think, is very helpful for us to show up in any other person's feed. Mm-hmm. We also are working on on having transcripts for Mm -hmm. all the episodes going forward it is very hard oh it's very very time intensive it's not yeah also yeah it's very time i don't think it's hard but it is very time intensive so i think those those are two of the same thing to me oh i think it's pretty tedious i think yeah it's too it's so tedious that i get frustrated okay yeah yeah, so we tag teamed episode eight, and I started episode seven, our week seven episode, and it's probably not going to get done because now there's another episode to transcribe, mm-hmm. um, which is this one, which I'm just at this point elongating and making myself transcribe <laughs> more. We are trying to work on finding like a program that will help us streamline it a little bit, but Regardless, you may have to wait a few days for the transcripts, but we will have them for each episode going forward, which, as we said, may only be a couple more episodes because we might give up on The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But we'll look into other countries. So, stats. Stats. Um, Honorable mentions to Australia and Germany. Hi. Mm Mm-hmm. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Germany's actually been on there um, for a few weeks, and I haven't shouted them out because I didn't think they were going to stick around. Oh, so we have like one fan in Germany? Yeah. Cool. Guten Tag. Um, Velkelman. Velkelman, yeah. Um, sorry, I was going to say the things I know to say in German, but they're nonsense. Don't say please, it. Don't say it. <laughs> please, Kelly, you're, don't say it. You're, you're going to offend them, and then they're never going to come back. <laughs> they're not offensive phrases, they're just no, nonsensical. They're not. <laughs> Um, and then yeah, Australia. I think that's a new one for our top countries. So, oh, nice. um, Hello. welcome, welcome, in. <laughs> or welcome, your native language. <laughs> um, and as always, hello to our Canadian friends. Uh-huh. Thank you for coming back. Uh, Ontario, Quebec, Alberta, and unknown. Manitoba has given up on us. In the U.S., top five states are Virginia, Washington, California, Georgia, and Massachusetts. No, I know. <laughs> what? They were beat out by one download. Um, okay. All right. As long as they're still there. <laughs> yeah. Massachusetts beat them out by one download. Nice. So if you want your state mention, you got to get those downloads and go back to previous episodes. Start <laughs> downloading. Them. Yep. <laughs> all right anything else no so next week is fantasy suites mm-hmm. which will then be preceded by the finale mm-hmm. and then i don't we don't know if after the final rose is going to be if it's gonna be like a monday tuesday thing for after the final rose yeah which i think is what they usually do so yeah 
Okay. We'll do our best with what we have. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. With that. So if, if it is a Monday, Tuesday thing with that episode, then our episodes will probably come out Wednesday, Thursday, because I don't think we're doing anything else. But yeah. yeah, cross that bridge when we come to it. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Love you. Bye. Bye.